Welcome to Build Your Dream Network. I'm Kelly Hoey. I see people struggling to connect effectively all the time, so I created this podcast to help you master your network building needs. Whether you're seeking a new job, looking for a promotion, or scaling your business, you need a network, and you're in the right place to get the advice you need. And don't worry, my advice is real. It's actionable and practical because it's the advice I follow and is what has transformed my career from the traditional to the unexpected. So let's get started. A number of episodes of this podcast in the coming weeks are going to be focused on job searches for those with experience and perhaps more than a few gray hairs. Whether you're re-entering the workforce or in career transition, or perhaps an employer seeking talent, I've got guests and episodes addressing your needs. To start off, let's look at the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics as a way to shape this conversation. Right now, men over age 20 are 70% of the workforce. Women over age 20 are nearly 60%. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Stats, 20% of Americans over the age of 65 were employed or actively looking for work in 2018-2019. That's up from less than 12% two decades earlier. By the way, the youngest baby boomers are those born in 1964. And happy birthday to all of you who turned 55 last year. Predictions are that the fastest growing labor force participation rates in the next four years will be for those age 64 to 75. For the rest of us, our labor force participation rates generally stay the same. Right now, baby boomers are 25% of the labor force. Gen X are 33%. Millennials come in at 35%, and Gen Z are 5%. And yes, the silent generation is still contributing, with 2% of that generation still in the workforce. The simple fact is we're living longer and working longer by design or necessity or both. Many of us, I'm Gen X, by the way, continue to find meaning in work and love to learn and try new things and want to continue to contribute our knowledge in a work environment. My parents, I don't know about your parents, but my parents' model of retirement just doesn't have any appeal to me. The job search reality, however, is that few employers seem to be tapping into the growing baby boomer talent pool. Though Glassdoor, now it's a website where current and former employees anonymously review companies and where users of the platform can anonymously submit and view salaries as well as search and apply for jobs, Glassdoor anticipates this will change over the next four years. Glassdoor notes in a recent hiring trend report that older workers have a rich institutional knowledge and professional contacts that are absent in younger talent and not found in AI or robots. Experience, the ability to recognize patterns and apply time-tested solutions to problems, along with having an established network, are valuable career assets. So for the younger listeners, take note and develop those two assets throughout your career so as to strengthen and extend your lifetime of career opportunities. Now back to my older listeners. Some ideas on how to address the job search today. I recognize you may be doing these things, and if so, let this be your encouragement to stick with it. First off, stay busy. Volunteer, consult, blog, take a course. If you're a former executive, can you mentor a small business owner through the SCORE network? Could you show potential employers your ideas, that rich institutional know-how, by posting articles on LinkedIn or blogging on Medium? I mention Medium as it gets great search engine optimization on Google. Secondly, update your email address. It may be hard to give up an AOL or Yahoo email, but skip the tears and do it. 
Get a personal URL if you can and a website, even if it's only a landing page with contact details. Next, develop an online presence. No, I'm not saying you should go digitally crazy downloading every app and creating profiles on every social platform, but you should have a full and complete profile on LinkedIn so recruiters and hiring managers can find your skills and experience. Next, refresh your membership in industry organizations, especially if you're seeking to stay in the same industry. Stay on top of industry news and new initiatives. Volunteer your time to the organization if you can. Next idea, leverage your connections. Does your former employer or employers have an official alumni program? Or are there ad hoc employee-led initiatives or meetups you should be attending? Is your profile and contact information up to date in these alumni databases? Are you sharing your job-seeking desires with friends? Listen, you've got to realize those closest to you can provide leads, not just moral support and encouragement. Next idea, customize your resume for each and every job application to emphasize the skills and past experiences that are directly applicable to the role you're applying for. Every employer doesn't need every single detail of your lengthy career, and you do want to keep your resume to two pages. Highlight soft skills as those are so in demand, as I've noted in an earlier podcast. List courses you're taking on your resume as it indicates a willingness to learn, and a willingness to learn is another desirable attribute in today's workforce. Next, don't get hooked on titles and some of the trappings of your old job. I recently toured the U.S. office of a global firm in the financial services industry. Talk about dark gloomy 1980s office design. But what was shocking was not the faux mahogany bookcases and beige walls. Rather, it was the years of institutional resistance to changing the decor from those who benefited most from it. That is, the senior executives in corner offices. Now, as these senior executives started retiring, the firm could look to creating a workplace more reflective of how work is approached today, that is, a more diverse, expansive workforce and new ways of getting work done. In short, focus on the type of work you want to do, not on whether you'll have the same title or size of office. Don't tie future work contributions to that past work identity. And one final thought. And this is really directed at those of you who have five to 10 years or more before traditional retirement age kicks in. Consider how you're connecting with your current work colleagues. Are you creating bonds? Are you keeping them at arm's distance or alienating them? Bluntly, do you give a damn about them so they in turn will give your career some consideration if for some reason you need them to do so in the future. One example, an email from a former colleague from my big law firm days. Now, I don't recall having any particular collegial or strong connection with this person who, as I recall, gave superficial hellos and was busy focused on her own promotions, etc. Fast forward, she lost her job about five years ago and has struggled since. Now, I really do feel badly for her, but honestly, my reaction to her email was read my book or listen to my podcast because the personal connection is just not there to take on the emotional weight of all of her years of career disappointments. Another example, the powerful auto executive Carlos Ghosn, who was at the apex of the global business community until he took one mighty fall. One intriguing article in the sea of speculation on what he did or didn't do as head of Nissan Renault described how Carlos really didn't make a lot of strong connections with colleagues during his career, and it shows up in the articles speculating on his innocence and guilt. 
No one seems to be coming to his aid. Listen, it's a cautionary tale, and I encourage you to read the Bloomberg Business Week article, The Hardest Fall, especially if you question the value of leaving time on your agenda for mentoring or you resist forming close relationships with people at work, or avoid management by walking around. If you want people to show up for you, you have to show up for them. And if you've been operating under some other illusion, correct that starting now. You still have time. I look forward to seeing you back here next week. And if there is a particular challenge you're facing as a boomer or Gen X, seeking a new role or navigating a career transition, contact me either through my website, jkellyhoey.co, or via Twitter, at jkhoey, so I can tap into my network of experts to find you your answers. Thank you for listening to Build Your Dream Network. Stay connected and don't miss a networking insight by subscribing to the podcast. And while you're there, I'd love you to rate and review the show too. Are you looking for more networking advice? Pick up a copy of my book, Build Your Dream Network. It's your guide to modern networking. I'd like to hear your networking questions, tips, and ideas. Connect with me via my website, jkellyhoey.co. You'll find links to all my social media accounts, plus a contact form to email me your questions. I'm Kelly Hoey. And I'll be back again next week to tackle your networking challenges.